Look at where I am. Kawasaki headquarters. Now, whenever Luke and I want to ride a brand new Kawasaki, we head here because this is where they've got all the brand new models. I mean, look right behind me. ZX10R, brand new. Luke's going to be heading out on that in a couple of weeks' time. Over there, much more up my street. KLX 450. But I'm not here to ride any of these mean machines. Oh no, I'm here to ride this mean machine. The J125. Now obviously I'm just having a little bit of a giggle. I mean, let's face it, a lot of us started our riding careers on scooters. And what's interesting is, is that 2015 saw more commuter style motorcycles sold than any other year since 1984. So the market's really on the up. And Kawasaki are definitely tapping into this, having released their first scooter into the market just a couple of years ago, the J300, which just just behind me and now this it's kid brother or twin brother they look very similar now some of the feedback we get on our reviews here at bike world is that they can be a little bit unrealistic because we're away in hot sunny climates doing the reviews and actually for the j300 launch i was in lagos portugal so you'd think sunshine wouldn't you oh no it was freezing cold, it was raining, the roads were greasy, my hands felt like they were going to drop off and to top it all off there were riders on the wrong side of the road mentioning no names. So thanks to your feedback we're actually going to do the review for the J125 here in sunny Britain. <laughs> I've spent the day riding around Buckinghamshire, emulating everything that I think a scooter rider would do. So I've opened it up on dual carriageways, I've sat in traffic, I've darted in and out of traffic, I've even done a bit of shopping. Fairly unsurprisingly, riding the J125 has reminded me of my time on the J300, because essentially they are the same bike. They're exactly the same chassis size, exactly the same wheel size. The only difference really is that it's a 125 and the badge, which makes me think, why would you choose the 125 over the more powerful 300? And I think there are three main reasons. Number one, perhaps the most obvious, is that you can ride this on a CBT. I mean, it's a lot of bike for a 125. Number two, it's 600 pounds cheaper than its bigger brother at 3799. And number three, it does everything that I think you would want a bike like this to do. I mean, I was getting to 70 miles per hour on a dual carriageway. I could fit my helmet and my bag underneath the seat. It's got a really comfy, big pillion seat. And I was riding around at 40 and I still felt like it had a lot left in reserve, like it really could still pack a punch. And that's pretty impressive for a 125. This bike is mainly going to be used for commuting, so it needs to be convenient. Now I hate getting anywhere and my phone's not charged and I can't play Angry Birds because that makes me an Angry Bird. So what's good about this is that it's got a waterproof glove box with a 12 volt power supply so you can charge your phone on the go or stick your GPS in there. Other reasons I'd buy this bike? Well, the way it looks. It's got that Kawasaki Ninja family feel going on. The headlights look pretty fierce. The indicators are integrated so nothing on spindly sticks. It looks really sleek. Okay, so it hasn't got upside down forks, but it has got petal brake discs and braided hoses and ABS comes as standard. Another thing that comes as standard, a centre stand. And also under the seat, which I mentioned before, you can fit a helmet and a handbag or man bag. There's a light, so if you're doing things in the dark, then you can see everything. Earlier when I was riding this bike around town, a guy actually asked me whether or not it was a 600, which I know may seem a little bit silly, but that's the kind of impression this bike gives. I think it's because of the size, the sleek styling and the chunky tyres. It comes in black and white but if that's not bling enough for you then you should spend the extra hundred quid and get this special edition with the ninja graphics and the green go faster stripes. But if that's not bling enough for you then there are loads of optional extras that you can pimp your J125 up with including luggage options, GPS mounts, exhausts or even a larger screen. But maybe not that one. I really enjoyed riding this today, it's a lot of fun. It's quite heavy for a 125, but all the weight is down low, which means that it's well balanced and when I was riding through traffic, I didn't have to dab my feet that much. Now I actually used to have an LX125 and riding that I felt quite intimidated on the roads, a little bit insignificant. But because this 125 is so big compared to other ones, it's got a lot of road presence and in turn that made me feel more confident. 
Now, I know a maxi scooter is the likes of the Bergman and the T-Max, and I can't really call this one because of its engine size, but it's as good as one. Could it be a mini maxi? Is that a category? No? Well, it should be.